why didn't you get it done? How would you feel if somebody gave you something to do and came back to you a few days later and said, why didn't you get that done? How'd that make you feel? On the other hand, if someone came in after giving you something to do and you hadn't completed it yet and said, how can I help you to get this accomplished? What do I need to do to help you? How would you feel? It's much different feeling, isn't it? As leaders, we need to help our people rather than accuse our people. It's a much better mindset to go with, how can I help you? Then why didn't you accomplish it? In many cases, what I've found, at least from personal experiences, when someone doesn't get something done, it's because I didn't set the proper expectations with that person. I didn't tell them when I needed it by or what the priority was of that particular project or task. So many times it's the three fingers pointing back and the one pointing and the three pointing at me in this particular case. So there's some things to consider here. And one thing is, is instead of focusing on finding fault, a more productive approach is to shift the conversation towards collaboration. And that statement of how can I help you is more so collaboration. Here's why this shift is so important. It's important because number one, it's going to foster teamwork. It's going to make the person feel supported and understood. They're likely to be more open to feedback and willing to work together to find a solution. Two, it's going to promote accountability. By offering help, you acknowledge, acknowledge that you're part of the solution. You're there to share the responsibility and help them to get to their goals. Number three, it encourages problem solving. Instead of dwelling on the past, you're focusing on finding ways to move forward and to overcome obstacles with them. And number four, it builds trust and respect. By showing genuine concern and willingness to help, you build a stronger relationship with that person and you create a more positive environment. Of course, there are times when direct feedback is necessary. However, even in these situations, it's important to approach the conversation with empathy and a focus on finding a solution. Instead of accusatory questions, try asking open-ended questions like these. What challenges are you facing? What resources do you need to complete the task? How can I best support you in getting this done? Adopting this collaborative mindset and focusing on how can I help you? You can create a more positive and productive work environment. And this can also be used at home as well. It's when people feel this way, they feel more empowered to contribute to do their best, either at home or at work. And here's some additional shifts to help you in implementing this Number one, be proactive. Offer help before problems arise. Check in to see how things are going. Number two, be specific. Don't just say, let me know if you need anything and I'll help you out. Offer concrete suggestions or resources. Number three, be genuine. This is extremely important. Show that you genuinely care about helping others succeed. They're going to help you more if you show them that you're really engaged in helping them. Be patient, number four. Change takes time. Be consistent in your approach and reward small victories with positive reinforcement. By making the simple shift in our communication, you can create a more positive and productive environment, both at home and at work, if you implement this. This is where everyone's going to feel more supported and empowered to achieve their goals and to do it mutually. Remember to be audacious.